So the reason why I created this video today is that I'm still seeing people talk about difficulties they're having with skipped stitches for um, thick material. And in this example here, I want to show you that in some of these stitches I have skipped areas like this right here. It's common to have skipped stitches either just at the approach here, just as you come over the hump, or somewhere here in the middle. And in fact in this one here, I have this entire area here that didn't get stitched properly. And this can be a really frustrating experience. So I had gone into my local quilt shop asking about a hump jumper. I had seen that those were the solutions to my problem. And my kind local dealer told me I already had a hump jumper and that is with this foot here. So although I had spent, I don't know how many hours staring at a needle going in and out of this space here, just behind there is this little button that I never once tried to push or figure out what it was for. This is a leveling foot. And by pressing this button, it keeps the foot level as it goes over this area here. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how this worked on the machine. Now, this is for the, this foot here that I'm showing you is for my low shank machines and it snaps into place right here. This works on my brother, my baby lock, and my singer. I'm not familiar with high shank machines or machines which attach on the side or on the back. This is the kind of foot that I'm familiar with. So I'll have a link to this in the description, but you should, if you have a brother or baby lock, already have one of these in your toolbox or in your accessories, but they're very inexpensive on Amazon if you need one. If you have another kind of a machine, I'd encourage you to go in and talk with your local dealer or perhaps um, to whomever that you trust for your sewing machine feet. But this little guy is just the bee's knees. I love this one. So give me just a second and I'll show you how it works. First of all, let's go ahead and install this foot. Um, I'm sure that you probably know how to do this, but just in case somebody's watching who doesn't, it doesn't take but a second to show, I simply lower my presser foot clamp onto this bar and it locks right into place and I lift it and it's ready to go. Now normally this button is out um, and the spring is kind of open and that's what we want. We're going to put our material in here and begin stitching. Okay, and just as this starts to rise here and I have a gap between my material and the tip of my foot, I want to stop sewing lift my presser foot, press in the button, keep it held down and start stitching. Now sometimes you can let go of the button and it will be fine and sometimes you have to hold it down. So let's see how it goes with this one. Okay, looks like we don't have any skipped stitches so that's great. As is the case with most times I'm filming a tutorial, I have to start over a couple of times because I messed something up. I am not the best at this, but um, this last stitch over here, I wanted to show you how it doesn't work if you don't push in the needle and then wouldn't you know it, I didn't need my humper, humper foot, <laughs> hump jumper foot that time. Let's see if again I can make this fail. I am going to tilt up the angle just a little bit because Sometimes what will happen is this thread will start looping down here when we're not using the hump jumper. So let's try and see if we can get this to mess up. Of course, the one time I want it to mess up, it doesn't. I'm gonna go slow so you can see that thread start to loop here. I hope you were able to see that on camera. Let's take a look now and see if we have missed stitches. And we do. So let me grab this so you can see it. And it's right here. See right here? Whereas on this one and this one, I didn't have any. So hopefully um, this will be helpful to you if you didn't know about this before and you are just as amazed and shocked as I am, will you let me know in the comments? Will you please tell your friends when they're on the hunt for a hump jumper that they don't need one? If you want to direct them to this video, I'd sure appreciate it. I have an 
alternative to this little drawer here that I think you might like better. I know that I love it and it's an easier way to organize and have all of my notions and feet right at my fingertips, ready to go and never lost again. All right, so here it is. I never said that it was pretty. I just said that it was handy and it sure is. This is a magnetic tool holder. You can see that my tools are gripping very securely to this. Um, and this is one that I purchased from Home Depot, but you can also get these at Harbor Freight for much cheaper. So I would say maybe look for that or some different alternatives, or maybe there's one being unused out in your garage somewhere. I don't know. But this holds all of the tools that I use on my machine and I have it right handy. So this is when I need to take the thread plate off of my machine. I use this little ratcheting dealy bob here and I have my tweezers, all of the feet that I like to use, has my scissors, has a couple extra needles, seam rippers, that kind of a thing. I don't have it bolted down to my desk because I like to be able to use this desk for things um, like um, piecing together projects or even Christmas wrapping, that kind of a deal. And so by being able to remove this, it just makes that easier and I don't run into it. It does have places that you can bolt it down if you would like to, but it is so heavy that for the most part, I don't really need to worry about that. It does lift up a little bit, like right here. I just hold it down with my finger and plunk it off of there. So I hope that you will like this little guy, maybe just as much as you liked the hump jumper. Let me know what you think. I do want to say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support as I learn how to do this whole crazy YouTube thing. I know that I'm not perfect and I have a lot of room to grow. Let me know what you think about this kind of setup where I do less of the chit chat at the beginning um, and get right into the content. I do really like visiting with you and connecting with you and kind of sharing and then having your responses in the comments. But I also want to be mindful that your time is important and that you may not find that helpful. Um, maybe it's obnoxious. I don't know. So let me know what you prefer. Do you like this way or do you like it better when we have kind of the conversation at the beginning and then get into the content? All right, friends, I'll be seeing you soon. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, I would sure appreciate it if you would take the time to do that. But if not, that's okay. I'm sure that you will later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.